Well, hello, hello. It's been a while since my last video. What can I say? I've been uh, quite busy lately. But today I'm back and I'm back with a vengeance. I thought, why don't I take a look at Lithium and see how the stock has been performing ever since the SPAC merger was completed. Spoiler alert, it has not been performing that well. Now, if you recall, just before the merger vote, I made a video explaining the inner workings of SPACs and DSPACs. I noted three events in the DSPAC process to be aware of. I've used Jobby as an example to show how these events had a negative impact on the stock price. The three events that I refer to are closing of business combination. After that date, pipe investors can short. The second one is S1 filing. Essentially, that is the registration of pipe shares. The last event is when S1 filing is effective. After that event, pipe investors can sell their shares. Now let's take a look at Lilium and see if my prediction was correct. Okay, so let's see, what do we have here? Vote on business combination was held on September 10th and the following business day, closing of business combination was announced. And at that point, pipe investors were able to short and it looks like some of them uh, chose to do so. Right, we see some downward pressure on the stock. But the stock did recover and it was trading for about a week above $10. But then on the 29th, F1 was filed. Now, the difference between S1 and F1 is that foreign corporations, which Lilium is, because Lilium is a German corporation that is trading on the US exchange. It is required to file F1 filing instead of S1, but otherwise those two filings are exactly the same. So F1 was filed on the 29th, but remember that SEC still needs to approve pipe registration and they haven't done so yet. So if pipe investors still cannot sell their shares, why do we see a downward pressure on the stock? It is possible that some investors wanted to dump the stock preemptively before pipe investors can do so. But in either case, we often see that effect when S1 or F1, in this case, are filed. Now, it usually takes the SEC around 30 to 45 business days to approve the pipe registration. So I expect pipe to be registered in the next couple of weeks. At this point, you might ask yourself, so what may happen once pipe shares are registered? Would that put additional downward pressure on the stock? And the answer is not necessarily. You see, most likely that the pipe investors who are looking to sell their shares have already shorted the stock. Remember, they were able to short the stock after September 13th. Pipe investors often choose to box their position in order to lock in profits. But once their shares are registered, at that point, they will be able to close their position and that should not put additional downward pressure on the stock. Now, another reason why there may not be additional downward pressure on the stock is the quality of the pipe investors. Looking at the list of the pipe investors, it appears that around 80 to 85% of those investors are long-term investors. The table is probably very small, let me zoom in. So that means that only around 20% of pipe investors are likely to sell their shares, and those investors have likely already boxed their position. Now, of course, I can't provide any guarantees, because even those that are typically long-term investors if they happen to be hurting right now, they may choose to sell their shares. And the thing is that SPACs have not been performing too well. So many of the investors that invest in SPACs are probably not in a good financial position. But nonetheless, looking at that pipe investor list, I must say that it is a very solid list of investors. Well done, Lilium.
While I have the chart open, let me give you a quick technical rundown. So we are looking at a daily chart. That is where the stock bounced last. So this is a very important area to hold. I want to see the stock bounce again in this area. So that is around what, 850 to $8. If the stock can hold this area, it will likely go lower. How low will it go? Well, it's hard to say. <laughs> but if it manages to bounce on this demand area, keep in mind two resistance areas, one at $10 and the other at $10.50. $10 resistance is just a resistance for all the SPACs, right? Because uh, the SPACs are priced at $10 initially. And the $10.50 is a resistance because that's where the stock bounced. Now, if you are a long-term investor and you already invested in the company, then I wouldn't really worry about those day-to-day -day price fluctuations. Now, if you're looking to invest in the company and you are a long-term investor, I think in the next few years, you'll have plenty of opportunities to buy the stock at a reasonable price. Now, I want to finish this video on a positive note. So let me just remind you that Oppenheimer initiated coverage on Lilium with an outperform rating and a price target of $24. While Piper Sandler initiated coverage on Lilium with an outperform rating and a price target of $17. Here's something pretty cool. I just googled Lilium coverage and one of the search results is my video. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. In that video, I review Piper Sandler's initiation of coverage report and the reason for this $17 price target. All right, that is all for today. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.